3A, 3-axis accelerometer, it therefore gives us, for steady situation, the ability to sense the orientation of the object. So this 3M sensor is not sensitive to fast motion effects, which is good. It is, however, sensitive to the magnetic effects of the object on which it is attached. And we also know that the Earth's magnetic field is not constant in space and can be distorted by iron effects. So in the end, this 3A sensor is also a, a very good sensor to consider in our toolbox. Natural conclusion for this sensor review is that sensor fusion is needed. No sensor can give access to the six degrees of freedom. Therefore, we need to get them together. We can distinguish two levels of fusion. The first, first one is the sensor level of fusion. We can call it local fusion. The goal is to gather every information we get from the sensors, reject the bad information, and make the most of the good information we get, and then provide estimates of the degrees of freedom we need. Yet, we should not forget the scenario information, and this is level two of the fusion. The use case is very seldomly full six degrees of freedom, and its information will reduce the six to a more reasonable number. For instance, when we talk about human motion, we certainly know that the human being is not supposed to dislocate, and so it behaves like an articulated mechanical model with constraints between the limbs. So sensor fusion is needed to achieve best performance, and the cost for this information is zero. So let's go now in, a, in the guided tool for this motion feature database. Tim Kelleher is the custom solutions architect at Movia, and he is a, really a technical business development guy and is going to walk us through the inside of this technology and talk about some of the customer solutions and show us, in fact, how some of this actually looks in action. Tim? Thank you for the introduction. Uh, now that Bruno has covered the fundamental principles and physics involved in sensing and measuring motion, I would like to walk you through Movia's motion feature database. We will use a number of video clips to better illustrate each of the given motion features. Movi has found that any given high-level motion application can be composed of one or more of three basic types of features, those being detection, estimation, and classification. Where detection is defined as determining whether an event occurred or not, estimation is defined as measuring the motion properties of the event, and classification is defined as determining what the event was. Here we see the complete feature map with the number of high-level features highlighted on the right. We have features like air pointing, gesture recognition, physical activity monitoring, dynamic orientation, trajectories, and motion capture. The first, and on the left-hand side of the slide, we see the three basic types, classification, detection, and estimation. The first high-level feature I'd like to cover is in-air pointing. To achieve in-air pointing, a two-axis gyroscope is employed in conjunction with an estimation algorithm that converts the rotational motion of the pointing device to a delta x, delta y translational motion of the cursor on the screen. Further, a three-axis accelerometer can also be utilized to sense which way is down, allowing for compensation of any roll angle of the pointing device, ensuring that the cursor always moves up when the device is moved up. In this video clip, the actor will use an air mouse pointing device to draw a series of patterns on the screen. So uh, this video speaks for itself. You just note the fluidity and the responsiveness of the, of the user. Our favorite actor draws the figure with our air mouse. It's just by using its natural wrist motion. The next high-level feature I'd like to cover is gesture recognition and physical activity monitoring. These high-level features are built from a combination of detection and classification. The 
gesture recognition algorithm compares sensor data when the gesture is performed to the data in a gesture database, either choosing the best fitting gesture or rejecting it as an unrecognized gesture. The algorithm can be built on top of a sensor set ranging from a simple one-axis accelerometer up to a nine-axis sensor set utilizing all three accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers. The sensor set employed is highly dependent on the size, nature, and complexity of the gesture library. In this next video, we will de demonstrate the gesture recognition feature. The actor will interact with Mobius Gesture Builder application with an air mouse. First, building a gesture library, then performing the gestures to be recognized. To perform the gesture, the actor in turn depresses a button on the air mouse, then performs the gesture, then releases the button. When the actor presses and releases the button, the gesture builder application is signaled that a gesture has begun and then concluded. This is an example of a bound gesture. So in this uh, second video, you can see on the top left subscreen that you can see both the hand of the user and the video of the screen at the background. The main screen window shows the software window capture. So we added some arrows and comments in green color for you to notice the events. So the user fills a database of gestures, then performs some test gestures, on this recorded database. In this demo, the gesture recall is competing on top of the mouse cursor signal, and the same method can be extended to multiple entries such as gyro plus accelerometer signals, and as we can imagine, better performances are achieved with multiple sensors. The next example of gesture recognition is the unbound gesture. This is where multiple gestures are performed in sequence without explicitly generating a start and stop gesture signal. In real time, the algorithm first detects that a gesture has been performed and then classifies that gesture. The video shows our faithful actor performing several fighting gestures. Each gesture is first detected, then classified. The, rest, the recognized gesture is then displayed on the screen. So on this video clip, you can see that the user uses only one sensor that is put in the glove. We could use several sensors on the body. And then he performs gestures so that in this example, the database is already inside the software. So each time a gesture is recognized, the corresponding picture is shown on the screen. So the example here shows something like uh, five gestures. And note, uh, that the gestures performed by the user are recognized online with no delay, meaning the system is not notified by coming gesture by pressing a button, as opposed to the previous use case. Next, we will cover physical activity monitoring. This is where a sensor set is worn on the body while the user performs daily activities. The algorithm detects transitions from one activity type to another, computes the time spent doing a given activity. The sensor set employed ranges from a one-axis accelerometer, again, to up to a nine-axis sensor set. The sensor set required, again, is dependent on the nature and number of activity types being monitored. In this video, our actor places a three-axis accelerometer in his pocket and performs the typical daily activities of walking, standing, and sitting. A pie chart is built showing the percent of time spent doing each activity as well as the transitions between activities. So in this video, you can see at the bottom left subscreen, you can see the user walking, standing, sitting. So he's wearing the pod, the motion pod in the pocket. The top right pie shows the recognized activity. Red is sitting, 
blue is planning, yellow is walking, green and magenta are transition detections. So the pie is updated in real time or with a small delay, depending on state of activity which is currently rec recognized. So in this example, we have a very different machine to recognize the gestures than for the previous examples. We use a statistical matching on the performed gesture signals combined with a state machine so that this is compared to the database. The next set of high-level features that I'd like to illustrate is dynamic orientation and trajectories. Both are examples of estimation. Dynamic orientation is defined as measuring the pitch, yaw, and roll angles of an object in motion. Dynamic orientation can be realized with sensor sets ranging from a simple two-axis sensor or up to a nine-axis sensor, with the nine-axis solution obviously the most robust. In this video clip, we will demonstrate dynamic orientation utilizing the different combinations of sensors, highlighting some of the limitations of the less than nine axis implementations. Five cubes are shown on the screen. The uppermost cube represents the nine axis implementation, while in the second row, a 3A3M, a 3G, a 3A3G, and a 3M3G implementation are shown respectively. The actor will move the sensor through a series of motions with each, which each of the cubes should mimic. The limitations of the lesser sensors will be shown. While the sensor that the actor is manipulating is indeed a six or nine axis sensor, we are able to demonstrate all the com combinations simultaneously by utilizing only the data from the sensor combination displayed over the cube. So on this video, the top right nine axis combination provides, of course, the best performance for orientation measurement. On the bottom line, left, 3A, 3M, they are accurate for absolute static orientation, but they show limitations in dynamic orientation, and they are sensitive to magnetic disturbances, as you will see. So one step to the right at this bottom line, 3G has no absolute orientation information, so it's subject to drift, and this happens if you wait long enough or shake out the sensor so that you go over the linear limit of the sensor. One more step to the right, you will get 3A, 3G, and then 3M, 3G, so they are combining capabilities in dynamic orientation with the gyro and some static orientation information with the 3A or 3M but they will inevitably drift in one axis as they do not have the full static information. So uh, the limitations of a given sensor combo can be tolerated or not, depending on the application and the amount of side information you have to fill the gaps. So at Movie Hour, our aim is to give our customers a comprehensive performance cost perspective for an educated decision. Now that we have covered dynamic orientation, we can move to trajectories. The trajectory feature computes the 2D or 3D dynamic orientation of the foot during a stride, detecting the four stride phases being heel strike, foot flat, toe off, and mid swing. 